Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where we are going to show you how to model structural members in the new STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on generating model geometry, which will include the process for using the structure wizard, using your copy and paste command, using your mirror or translational repeat commands as well. For this video, we are going to be focusing on our model generation tools, which can be found in the geometry tab of the ribbon toolbar within your structure tools. The first command we're going to show you how to use is your structure wizard. Now the structure wizard offers a library of predefined structure prototypes. The structure wizard may parametrically generate a structural model and then transfer and superimpose it on the current structure. You can see here, once we open the structure wizard, it'll become its own separate window on your screen and you can find your prototype models. For this example, we're going to be selecting our truss models and then you can see all of the prototypes within this model type. Here we're going to be selecting the north light truss. Now to enter the parameters for this types of truss, you're going to double click on the option that you want over at the left hand side. This will allow you to enter all your parameters. So what we need to do is we need to, for this particular prototype, we need to enter a length and this is your overall length of your truss your height, and then also your width. And we're just going to do a two-dimensional truss for this exercise. We're going to enter the number of bays along the length and also along the width. Now, by entering the number of bays, this means basically that each bay is going to be equally spaced. If you don't want them equally spaced, you can click on your Browse button, and you can specify a length for each individual bay, which will then total your overall length for your structure. Once you're satisfied with your parameters, we're going to click apply and then we'll be able to preview our truss. If I, I can zoom in and out and I can also by holding down the left mouse button, rotate around the window. Now, if I want to change any of the parameters after I initially specify them before I go back to STAD Pro, I can just double click in this window, which will bring me right back here and it will allow me to change the parameters before I commit them to the model. Once I'm satisfied with my truss and I want to officially send it over to STAD Pro, I'm going to go up to my menu bar items. I'm going to say File, followed by Merge Model with STAD Pro Model. This will officially create this model data over in STAD Pro. Now, as we do this, we need to tell the program where this entity or where this is going to be located. So we're going to specify the coordinate where our lower left-hand node is going to go. And we're going to enter ours at 0, 0, 0 for this model. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, as we can see, once you commit it over to the model, all of your nodes and members will be generated by that process. Now, before we move on, to make it easier to complete the next several exercises, let's go ahead and turn on a few view options on our screen. If we go up to the ribbon toolbar, we're now going to select the view tab, and then we're going to find our label settings here. In addition to the label settings, we also can turn on individual labels for node numbers, plate numbers, and member numbers. Let's go ahead and turn on our node labels and our beam labels, and we can see those options are turning on on our screen. We're now going to return to the geometry tab in the ribbon toolbar. Now this first operation, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use the copy and paste command to either copy and paste pieces of geometry, including members and nodes. First, we're going to start with nodes, so we're going to have to activate our nodes cursor. In the geometry tab of the page control area, we're now going to click on our nodes cursor, and then we're going to select whichever node in the model we're interested in. For this exercise, I'm going to do a single left-hand click on node number five. Now up in my clipboard area, I can just simply hit copy. And then you're going to see that the paste command is going to become active and I can just simply click paste. You can also use control C and control V to perform this same exact operation. Now here in the dialog, I need to tell it where to post the node that I just copied. 
So I'm going to post by the following x, y, and z values. And basically, I want it to be 15 feet in the negative y direction from the node that I just copied, which is node number 5. So I'm going to enter y equals negative 15 feet, x and z equals 0, and then we'll click OK. And you can see that node number 11 has now appeared. I can now use this node to complete my modeling with the Add Beam tool. In addition to that, I can also copy and paste members. So here I'm going to want to make sure my beams cursor is active, and I'm going to select whichever member or group of members I want to copy. Again, I'm going to go to Copy, and then I'm going to click Paste. Now here I can enter the same way I had done previously by the following x, y, and z values, or I can enter them by a certain distance. So say I want to post this column over here. Well, it's starting at the distance I want to go is from node number 5 to node number 1. And we'll click OK. And now that new column has appeared. Next, we are going to learn how to mirror our model geometry. The mirror command is used to copy or move the entire structure or portion of it by mirroring it about any plane parallel to one of the three global Cartesian planes. For this exercise, I'm going to need to select which members I want to copy first. So I'm going to draw with my beams cursor around the entire model. Next, I'm going to go up to my structure tools within the geometry tab of my ribbon toolbar and click on my mirror command. Once selected, I have a few different options. The first thing I'm going to want to select is what plane do I want to mirror it around? And I'm going to select the Y, Z plane. It'll basically be about this plane here. Now, the next option I need to decide is do I want to create a move or copy? So do I want to mirror this entire structure over to the left-hand side of this column while removing everything to the right-hand side? Or do I want to copy? And I'm going to select a copy for this exercise. I also have the option to mirror the member orientation. For this particular model, we haven't exactly assigned any orientation yet, so I'm going to leave this unselected for now. And finally, I can enter the location of the point I want to mirror it around. Now, if you're not quite sure where you want to mirror it around, you can select this icon, and then you can click any node within the plan. So here, I'll select the peak of the truss. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. And now we can see that our structure has been mirrored. The next command we're going to show you how to use is the translational repeat command, which is used to copy or repeat the entire structure or a portion of the structure in a linear direction. To do this, I'm going to select first the members I want to copy. I'm going to go up to my ribbon toolbar and click on my beams cursor. And then I'm just going to say, select all beams. Once I do that, I'm going to find my translational repeat icon available in the geometry tab of the ribbon toolbar. Once I select the translational repeat, I'll have a few options to specify. First, I can specify in what direction I want to make this copy, and I'm going to select the Z direction for this exercise. I can enter the number of steps I want. You can see I can create multiple structures as needed, and I can enter a default step spacing. We're going to enter negative 35 feet for this. Now, if you do have multiple bays, you can use an uh, atypical or non-uniform base spacing by entering the spacing in this table here. Down here at the bottom right-hand corner, we can choose what we want to generate, and we can generate geometry only, or if you already have properties assigned, you may want to select this option as well. Finally, we're going to select the checkbox to link steps, which will basically mean that it's going to draw a line perpendicular from each node in the corresponding frames. So we're going to select that option, but then you're going to notice below that we have an open base. And we're going to select this option as well, because as we create a copy of this frame, what I'm not going to want is I'm not going to want a member at the base of the structure. So STAD Pro will be able to detect the base of the structure, and it won't model that additional member there. 
Once we are done, we can go ahead and click OK. And you can see here that our translational repeat is complete. The last command we're going to show you how to use is how to use the circular repeat command. This will be used to make copies of the entire structure or a portion of the structure in more of a circular direction. So what we're first going to do is select the members we want to, to pick. Now I could hold down my control key and select the members in my view window. Or if I happen to know which members I want to select, I can also select them over in the data area. You can see I can select nodes and members here. So for me, I want to select members 1 through 18. And you're going to see they're going to be appearing on my screen. Next, I'm going to go up to my ribbon toolbar and select the circular repeat icon. Here, I need to enter a few different answers. My axis of rotation will be my y-axis or my vertical axis. I'm going to enter my total angle. I'm going to enter negative. 180 degrees. Basically negative degrees means it's going to go in the clockwise manner. And the number of steps. I'm going to enter six steps. About which node do I want to go through? And I'm going to take a look here. I'm going to go through this base node, node number 12. Now here I do still have the option to do geometry only and I do still have an option to link steps. Let's go ahead and say link steps. And then again, we're going to keep the base open. Once we're done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see that I've now created the circular repeat area. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.